Hello my friends, if you are new here, welcome to the family. If you have been here before, welcome back. You have probably heard that the NHS has opened recruitment for overseas nurses. And the good news is that some of the countries that have been on the red list have been removed from the red list. And that means many of you stand chances of getting these jobs. And you may have probably already applied. But I hate to break your hearts by saying that a good number of you will get rejected. Why is that? Because you have got the information that the vacancies are there. But what they don't tell you is that for you to get a job as a nurse in the UK with a visa sponsorship that allows you to come in with your dependents, you must be registered with the Nurses and Midwifery Council of the UK, NMC. And since a good number of my viewers are actually interested in applying for these nursing jobs, I decided that it is a good idea for me to show you guys how exactly you can have your name entered in the register of the NMC so that you can be confident when you are applying for these jobs that you're going to get it. The process is quite straightforward and it could take you only a few weeks depending on how organized you are with all your documents. And once you do that, then you'll be sorted and ready to apply and take advantage of all these openings. So if you are interested in going through this process, which takes only four steps and you are ready to start, then stick around as we dive into the NMC website and find out exactly how it is done. So let's go. Okay, my friends. So here we are at the NMC website. That as you are seeing here, Nurses and Midwifery Council of the UK, of course. And here you can see the heading, register as a nurse or a midwife if you trained outside the UK. If you trained from within the UK, then this does not apply to you. So as you can see here, everything you need to know about joining the register as a nurse or a midwife in the United Kingdom is here, guys. And I'm going to break it to you in a very clear and concise manner. So when you come to this website, what you need to do is come to this section where it says find out how to join the register. Then you just click on it. So when you come here, it is repeated here, register as a nurse or midwife if you trade outside the UK, step by step. Okay, so here are the four steps that I was talking about. Step one, two, three, and four. Step one is check you are ready to register, complete eligibility and qualification application, take the test of competence, complete the registration application, and then evaluation of your application happens of course here you don't need to do anything as you the applicant because this is done by the nmc so let's just check what is contained in each section to do that you just come here show so at the beginning you can acquaint yourself with these parts for example you can check how much it's going to cost you how long it's going to take how you should prepare your evidence and how to get your pre-application checklist. For example, let's check how much it costs. So you'll just come here and you check how much it costs. So the total cost of the fees and test is £1,170. This includes the cost of the CBT and the OSCE if you need to take the test of competence. These costs could be higher if you need to receive tests. This does not include the cost of your visa, flights to the UK, and any accommodation and travel while in the UK. The good news about these costs is that some parts of the exam are taken at home on computer, online. But some aspects you must travel to the UK. And that's where the visa and travel and accommodation issues come in. So you can just come here. You can look at the breakdown is here, the requirement and the amount. So qualification evaluation fee, 140 pounds. This basically tries to equate your qualification to the UK qualification to see if your nursing qualification you gained from your home country equals to a UK nursing qualification. So this is where it is paid 
and then computer this is what i was talking about computer based test cbt cost is 83 pounds for the first sitting computer based test cbt full receipt cost is 83 pounds for the full receipt then computer based test cbt partial receipt cost 70 pounds the difference between full receipt and partial receipt is that you could have failed only a particular section of the test and you are allowed to receipt only that specific section or in some cases under unfortunate circumstance if you have failed the entire test then you may want to receipt the whole test so that brings about the difference in the costs between the partial and the full receipt here we have the OSCE Objective Structured Clinical Examination Cost, which is £794, which is paid to the test provider before the exam for the first sitting. So if you need to receipt the full OSCE, the cost is here. If you are receipting partial OSCE, the cost is here. As you can see, it is reduced. If you have passed your exams, then the registration fee is £153 pounds which is paid to nmc on submission of registration application this fee is refundable in certain circumstances so guys i'm not going to go through all this because the video would go on forever but you can keep on clicking so maybe we can just come here you click and check how long it takes let me see you see the dates are here 14 days 30 days uh, things like that so you come through it and finish the checklist and then you are done with that part and then once you finish going through this you can come and complete eligibility qualification application so what is contained in here is this this is the first part of your registration we will check you are eligible to register via this route so when you're ready to start you come here begin your application provide indemnity evidence provide qualification and registration information pay evaluation fee this evaluation fee is not refundable because it is basically creating for you a comparability certificate that shows how your qualification compares to a uk qualification after that you await the outcome and you share your application status the outcome of this evaluation not the outcome of the entire process so when you're ready to begin you just come and click here and then here is the overview before you start you read this part all of this you should read this guide in full to understand the evidence you need then you say start your application when you're ready so as you can see here the questions they will ask you during your application are basic questions like your nationality training and the country you trained in then you'll be required to create your NMC account. So this account is the one you'll be using to log in and complete your eligibility and qualification application. But the first step of this is to provide identity evidence. As I have mentioned earlier, things like your country of origin, your passport, and things like that. Once you're done with that, you just come here, click and see what is there, and then you complete it. Once you finish that part, the next step is to take the test of competence. If you are finding any value, guys, please make sure that you give this video a thumbs up. And if it is useful and you know anybody who wants to come and work in the UK as a nurse, please be kind enough and share this video with them. You will do them a big favor. But also, you sharing this video helps the channel to grow. And by doing that, you are helping spread this kind of good information to others. And if you haven't subscribed, please make sure that you subscribe because I'll be making plenty of videos like this. And I want to believe that you don't want to miss any of them. So you can subscribe right now and then we continue. Thank you for doing that. Let's move on. Okay, so here, once we've confirmed that is the NMC token, your eligibility, we may ask you to complete a test of competence as well as completing your registration application. So if you want to learn about the test of competence, you just come here. We can click briefly and see what is there. Test of competence is here. If you are taking the test for nurses and midwives, you come here. If you are taking the test for nursing associates, you 
come here. Pass rates and candidate numbers. Find out the latest pass rates and number of sittings for each part of the test. So all that information is available under that section. After that, the most important part probably is here, is to complete your registration application. And under this, you can see provide health evidence, provide character evidence, provide language evidence, confirm professional indemnity arrangement, pay registration fee. This is the one that we're talking about as being refundable. But they emphasize that only in certain circumstances. So let's just check one of them see what really is contained in here so provide health evidence okay under health evidence what do we have so first they start by explaining why they need to ask you for health evidence we need to know that people applying to join our register meet our health requirements to ensure they can practice safely and effectively Declaring a health condition and or disability doesn't necessarily mean you won't be able to join our register. We just need to be sure that you have taken the steps to manage this so that you are able to practice safely and effectively. Guys, the most important thing in the health sector in the UK is what they call a safe practitioner. All the regulators like the Dental Council, the Nurses Council, and the Medical Council all emphasize the issue of safe practitioner. However, they cannot discriminate against you on the basis of your health status. But your health condition must be well controlled. For example, if you have epilepsy, you must be able to provide evidence that it is under control. Because guys, we all know what can happen if you are a nurse in the ward and then suddenly you get an epileptic attack. So those are the kind of things that the NMC is looking at. But don't be scared that they are going to discriminate against you because of your health condition. UK is all about inclusivity. That is another thing that you are going to get very very familiar with in the UK. So let's continue. So what is contained in the health and character guidance is here. Complete self-declaration. So you are going to read all of this by yourself. Let to go through that because we might not finish the video. What if I have a health condition or disability which is not managed? Good question, right? Okay, so this is what the NMC says. Shall ask you to tell us its nature and seriousness. For example, frequency, impact on your practice and duration how it affects your practice and why you feel that it doesn't need to be managed. How you make sure that you don't put patients and others at risk. Tell us if there is a pattern, any triggers or it's a recurring issue. For instance, is it active or relapsing? So you have seen the things that they want to know, right? But in all of this, they are looking at patient safety. So if you cannot make your own declaration, someone else can do it on your behalf. For example, your family GP or family doctor or special health practitioner, but they cannot be a friend or a family member, of course, to avoid bias. So here are the conditions for the person you can nominate. Confirm they have carried out your health assessment in the last six months. Confirm they are qualified to complete your health declaration. They will also need to either verify and agree with the information you have given us about your health or explain why they may not agree with what you have told us about your health and why they feel you may not be capable of safe and effective practice due to a health condition and or disability you may have. Mark these words, safe and effective practice. Okay. That is all they are looking at. And then they have other information here. And then you finish. So just like you have done with the health evidence, you can do this, go through it. So character evidence, language evidence. This is now the English tests that you have taken and discussed. Confirm professional indemnity arrangement. For those who are not familiar with indemnity, this is a form of insurance that all health practitioners pay here in the UK such that in case of 
any unforeseen circumstances where the patient may want to sue you, the indemnity provider can handle the case for you. So that is very, very important in the UK. So that is all about that. Then you pay the registration fee, verify your information and await the decision. So that is what is in that part. Then finally, you come to evaluation of your application. Once we have everything we need, we we'll contact your referees to verify your information. So how do they verify your information? Let's find out here. Verifying your information. So that is now if you have already completed your application. Here is what they do. They will check all these things that you have provided. And most importantly, if they feel there's something that they need, they may need to ask you for more information if any of the details you provide are unclear or appear incomplete. Or if you or your referees provide conflicting information. We may also ask you for further information if you indicate you have a health condition and or a disability that you are not managing. If it is well managed and controlled, then the NMC does not have an issue with it because it does not pose risk to yourself, the patients and to your colleagues. But where the concern comes from is if it's not controlled and poses a risk to yourself, to your patients or to your colleagues. Also, if you declare you have received a police charge, caution, conviction or conditional charge or determinations that your fitness to practice is impaired. I think that is self-explanatory. You will have an opportunity to provide more information with your application and we recommend you provide as much information as possible to begin with to help us assess your application more quickly. If we need to ask for more information at any point, we will contact you by email. If you really want to get over the process quickly, get a visa sponsored job and move to the UK as soon as possible, make sure that you provide as much information as possible at the onset of your application. Otherwise, you will be delaying your own self because each time they ask you for additional information, you are moving backwards. So when it comes to this application, less is never more. More equals to more in this case. So after that, you, all you need to do is to wait for the decision. As you can see here, we will aim to assess your application within 30 days. 30 days, guys. That's why I said it takes a few weeks. Once your application is successfully assessed, the only thing you need to do is to take the computer-based exam and the OSC, and you're done. So the assessment is done within 30 days. Then they will contact you by email to let you know the decision. If the decision is not in your favor and you think something is wrong, you can always appeal the decision. And this is how you can do the appealing of the decision. Otherwise, if everything is fine and you take your exams and you pass, then guys, you get registered. And just like that, you will now be ready to take advantage of those opportunities that they are talking about. And you could be applying and getting rejected and wondering, why are you not getting? When in actual sense, this is the reason. And with that, I would like to say, if you have watched up to this point, then this video probably has been useful. So make sure that you give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one.